Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Byron. I lead our modern work customer success team here at Microsoft. I'm so excited to be with you today and really welcome to a great give event with Easter Seals. I was asked to start with describing my appearance. So I have beautiful black hair. Well, maybe a little <laughs> bit of an exaggeration. It's probably more gray than black. My eyes are either brown or hazel, depending on the day. And I'm wearing a black sweater and it says art changes everything on the sweater, which is a bit of exaggeration because I did lose power. I'm in the Northwest on Sunday and art did not help me there either. <laughs> uh, but with that, um, that's me. And um, I was also asked, why is giving important to me? And for me, it's really a measure of success. I grew up in the backwoods of Kentucky with a single parent um, and others had to provide for us at times. And so it's personal where I'm now able to go and provide and help others. And that's just frankly, very cool. And so today we're here with Easter Seals. Most of you know Easter Seals. It's one of the, our favorite causes. Uh, been around for over a hundred years, really changing the way the world defines disabilities. So pretty, pretty cool. So with that, what I would like to do and how would like, we would like to start is I would like to welcome Megan, our Director of Accessibility here at Microsoft. Megan, well, over to you. Yeah, great. It's incredible to be here with you today. So I am uh, a white woman wearing a shirt with poppies that really uh, epitomize the fall weather that we are all having here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I have long dark hair and black glasses. And so I love your shirt that says art changes everything because one of the things that we really live by here at Microsoft is nothing about us without us. And the Disability Film Challenge is a great example of how when we tell authentic stories about people with disabilities told by the disability community, we change the global conversation on disability. Um, as you know, we see disability as a strength and we hire people with disabilities as a way to drive the innovation that we honestly see, you know, at this company. That's great. That's great. Hey, can you tell us a little bit about your story? Yes. So um, I have a mental health condition uh, and I am the co-lead of our employees um, with mental health disabilities here at, at Microsoft. And so, you know, over uh, the last 21 months during the global pandemic, we have seen just an incredible increase in the number of people who have been diagnosed with mental health conditions um, or experiencing symptoms. So, you know, as disability or as mental health disabilities are the number one disability in the world, Again, I come back to the uh, the deep privilege that I have to stand up and say, uh, this is what a mental health disability looks like. Uh, you can't tell that I have one just by looking or speaking at me. So be curious, be thoughtful, and always be thinking about how you're creating a culture of inclusion. That's great, that's great. Thank you, Megan. Um, how inspiring. Uh, with that, what I would like to do next is Dell is a founding sponsor of the Easter Seals Disability Challenge. And so with that, if I would, I would like to invite uh, Keith Perry, a vice president of, of Dell, to come on and speak a couple words uh, next. Thanks, Byron. And I'm a white male with uh, every day, I think my hair gets a little bit more gray. Uh, I could afford to lose probably 15 or 20 pounds. <laughs> and I always wear a golf shirt, which is my uh, favorite hobby. So I've got a white golf shirt on today. Hey, Byron, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to join. We are so excited to be a founding member of this great challenge. Uh, you know, when, when we think about technology at Dell, we always think that technology uh, enables human potential. And, and from our side, seeing these winners and seeing what they do is a great example of that. But we will continue, like Microsoft, uh, to try to invest in making that technology accessible, not, not just to those few, but to everyone across the globe. So we're super excited for this. Congratulations to the winners. And uh, thank, for, thank you for having us today. Absolutely. So enough with, with Keith and myself and Megan. I mean, this is great, but it is time uh, to uh, what I would like to do is welcome Laura Crypta to, to welcome our Easter Seals colleagues and get this get us started today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Byron. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Krupka. I am a woman with red hair. I just want to stress there's no gray hair. And I'm so excited to be here today. Byron, thank you so much for your sponsorship of this event. I also want to mention and give a shout out to my fellow GIVE team members, Michelle Lumpkin, Jamie Weber, Alexandra Gore, Leo Paiva, and Heather Ziegler. You all have done such an amazing job this year, so thank you. With that, I'd like to move on and bring over Nancy Weintraub, the Chief Advancement Officer for Easter Seals, South, Car South California. Nancy, please join me. I'm it's the Lauren. return of the How redheads. <laughs> it's so great to be here today. I too am a fellow redhead, white female with blue eyes. And today I am wearing, I would call it a sky blue colored dress. Um, I think the only differentiation between us two redheads is that I have bangs and Laura does not. So good qualifier there. Um, we're so pleased to be back here with our as we affectionately call you, our Microsoft Teams team. Um, we just, we, we're thrilled to be back together again, and we really can't express enough our appreciation to both Microsoft and Dell for your ongoing partnership and support as we really further disability inclusion together. And with that, the moment we truly all have been waiting for, I am so pleased to introduce the founder and director of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, the one, the only, Nick Novicki. Let's catch up and see what he's doing inside the Microsoft Theater. Nick, take it away. Hey, thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, I am a white little person uh, with a little bit of scruff. I'm wearing a black suit, white shirt, and a skinny black tie because I am inside the Microsoft Theater. So I got a dress to impress Woo! you today. Glad to uh, be back. <laughs> for those of you that don't know me, uh, I am an actor, comedian, writer, and producer. I've been very lucky in that I've been in over 40 TV shows and movies. I've gotten the honor to work with Martin Scorsese, the Farley brothers, and a lot of amazing directors and creative people. But the majority of my work has been self-driven. Really early in my career, I realized that as somebody who's three foot 10, if I wanted to be the romantic lead or the gangster, I was gonna have to be involved in all aspects of my career, learning how to write, learning how to produce. And work led to work, and it's worked out for me. But Nine years ago, I was looking around. I was like, why aren't more people with disabilities creating their own work? It's led to opportunities for me. And just so you all are aware, we are the largest minority population in the world. According to a recent study from the CDC, one in four Americans identifies as having some form of disability. That's 61 million Americans. Yet we're also the most underrepresented, with less than 3% of roles going to people with disabilities. And out of that, 95% of those roles are portrayed by actors that don't have disabilities. So nine years ago, I wanted to take action. So I created the Disability Film Challenge to help other people with disabilities take their career in their own hands and tell authentic stories. And it's continued to grow since it started. But ultimately, when I partnered with Easter Seal Southern California in 2017, we took it to the next level. To date, we've had hundreds of films that have created countless success stories. Now, many of us are aware that there is a problem of disability inclusion. But with the film challenge, we don't just look at the problem. We're part of the solution. And these last two years have been truly historic. Many people have been staying home. And as artists, many people were not able to create. But I'm so honored that we had the most films ever created in 2020 during a global pandemic. And then in 2021, even more films. Now, every year, the culmination of the film challenge is our award ceremony. This is a chance where people with disabilities are able to get together and have pride in themselves, their disability and their work. It's an event that many people look forward to. And because of the global pandemic, we weren't able to be there in person. But thanks to the Microsoft Teams Teams, and I'll say that again, because it is fun to say, the team's teams, we were able to create an experience inside the Microsoft Theater that was just as amazing as an in-person event. And if I do say so myself, I think it was even more amazing in some ways. 
Now we're about to show you a recap of those awards. So take it away, Teams Teams. Hey, the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge is going live in less than an hour. Go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. Look, I'll be in there somewhere. Who's ready to start these awards? We are coming to you live from our virtual location, the Microsoft Theater. Kabam! Look at that! It was just really meaningful to see an event that was catered directly to disabled people. You guys are mold breakers. I can't wait to see what you all do next. You made us all laugh, you made us think. Thank you all for putting yourself out there and driving disability inclusion forward. Thanks to Microsoft Teams, we were able to hold our award ceremony during a global pandemic. And it was the biggest one we've ever had. Now, everybody, let's sit back and let's enjoy the fact that we're all here together and the fact that most of us still aren't wearing pants. <laughs> well, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm not going to admit if I'm wearing pants right now or not, but at least I'm wearing <laughs> feet up top. So. <laughs> uh, now, what we are about to do is we have the winners of the last four film challenges. We're going to show their films. We're going to get the chance to listen and talk to the winners. So as you're hearing from the winners, if you have questions, uh, please hit, a, hit us up in the chat. Or at the very end, we're going to bring everybody back together. And we're going to get a chance to, to talk collectively and have this an honest conversation and, and open. And, and anything you want to know about us, the films, make sure to hit us up in the chat. And, and we want to get to those. So just so you're aware, the film challenge has to have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. Each year, the participants that can enter from anywhere in the world have to follow our assigned genre, uh, which, which is uh, the genre themes and props that have to be included in the film so that we know that these films were created during our film challenge dates. And I have to say that right now because we have a lot of smart people at Microsoft and I don't want anybody out there uh, making a film as we're talking because you don't have the assignment yet. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, sequentially uh, with year by year, starting with 2021. This genre was mockumentary uh, because we really felt like this was a, a, a genre that we could do, uh, allowing to really utilize the hybrid world we're living in of uh, being able to be on set, but also use pre-shot footage. So I'm going to bring real quick the uh, winners uh, of that film, Dorphopsychosis, up, and then we're going to see that film. Emily and Poncho. Hello. Hi, guys. So, hi. My name is Poncho, uh, Poncho Moller. I am a Latino little person. I have a beard. I'm wearing a rustic color sweater, and I'm wearing a chain with a skateboard at the end of it because that is my first passion, always. Mwah. And I'm Emily. Uh, I'm a white female. I have dark brown hair with bangs and black glasses and a pink sweater. So do you guys want to quickly set up your film or talk any any about your inspiration behind creating this film? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, it, we got really excited when we saw that it was going to be mockumentary. Uh, it's one of our favorite genres to watch. And so the first thing we thought of is like, Christopher Guest movies, what we do in the shadows, those sorts of things. And we thought, well, what can we come up with that's original and never been seen before? And Poncho and Steven came up with the idea of dwarfopsychosis, which is uh, when you, an average sized person thinks they are a little person. And that's the jumping off point. Yeah, our, our film is about uh, two fraternal twin brothers. One's a little person and the other one is an uh, average sized person. And on their 40th birthday, there's a huge reveal of uh, telling him, telling the, the the brother that believes he's a little person that he's not a little person and that he hasn't been for 40 years and to snap out of it, snap out of the psychosis that we created <laughs> for our film. And it's it's been a really, really fun journey in the sense of uh, it's taught me to like, um, to believe in myself and know that I can create something like on my own with like a, a team that's just as good as or better than what's put it being put out on TV now, and we did it for no money. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now, uh, if you're out there, we know we got a, a team that can execute and execute on budget. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now let's see, Dorphopsychosis. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish. 
Hey, what's up? We're the Bianco brothers. We're a fraternal twins. Yep. I'm Peter. I'm Pat. And uh, I know we're fraternal, but it's really hard to tell us apart. Nah, we're not identical. Really. But uh, yeah, and uh, we love to do everything together travel, date, and we happen to be little people. Really proud of that. So, yeah. But yeah, traveling, dating. Why uh, don't you go get those pictures, buddy? Oh, from the last trip? Yeah. Is that Remember? okay? I'm gonna go, where are they? Over Yeah, the Grandma counter? sends us everywhere. Where are they? Over on the counter? Yeah, over there? go get them okay. on the counter. Yeah, so Grandma sends us, anyways. He's not a little person. He thinks he is. I can't reach him. Use the stool. Oh, oh, dude, don't show that one, man. Oh, this is fun. We went to the Bahamas. <laughs> we got really time. drunk. That yeah. was fun. That was a really yeah. good time. This is us when we went to Disney World. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we wear these hats so we can spot each other in large crowds. It makes mm -hmm. it a lot easier. This was a good trip, but they, they wouldn't let us go on Splash Mountain. <laughs> they let you go. Show them the Grand Canyon. Okay. This is epic. How epic is that pic? Right? Really great. Is, we're and staring can off you tell the, the difference from behind? No. no I can't. Well... You so what can. would you say uh, are some of your biggest differences? I'll let him answer this one. Oh, uh, well, he's, tattoos, right? Yeah. I, I'm terrified of needles, but he's, he's a wuss. Pat's a tougher guy than I am. Um, oh, uh, I always have to have socks on. Even if it's so hot, Pat never wears socks. This is, uh, this is a toy from when we were kids that I hold, I hold on to everything. Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm not really sure why you guys are here today. Um, I'm not sure if it's to document, you know, little people, uh, but it's been really hard uh, because I love my brother so much and I look up to him, even though he's only two minutes older. Um, he's the tough one. You know, we, we get made fun of a lot and people know we're different, so they like call it out. But I just I hope he knows how much I love him and how much I look up to him and I've always wanted to be like him. So right about now, it's grandma's bathing hour. It's Pete's job. <laughs> yeah, we live with our grandma. Anyways, the real reason I had you guys come here today is because today is the day that I'm gonna reveal the truth to my brother. I told myself no matter where we are in life that on our 40th birthday, I'm gonna tell him the truth. I mean, it's, he's been in denial all these years. It's, it's gotten to be a little too much. It's. It's embarrassing. You know you don't need a stool, right? Shut up, bro. You, you don't need a stool. Maybe it's because we share the same dwarf chain. I have no idea. But I just want him to be normal. Oh. And if you listen really carefully, you can hear him singing Grandma her favorite song. She loves... Pitbull. Oh, thanks, man. I got you a gift. Dude, you said we weren't doing gifts I this know, year. I just open it. Come on, man. Open it. It's just a gift certificate to the Wiz, because nobody needs no, the Wiz. No, just open it. You're going you're gonna to love it. Hmm. What is this? Peter Bianco, you are not a little person. Doctor. What is this? Is this like a joke or something? Come on. Just let that sink in. Wait, doctor? Did you do... This is your hand... Did you do this? Yes, I did. Why? Because you need to realize the truth, brother. Listen, we're twin brothers, and I love you to death, more than anything. But you are not a little person, all right? Let's do that. No, you're not a little person. Don't say that, man. I'm not. I'm, listen, I'm just being honest with you. I know I'm being honest with you. Look, look at my arms. Look at my arms. Look at your arms. Look at your legs. Dude, what are you talking about? We're brothers. I'm a little person. Listen, it's okay. It's not about what's out here. It's about what's in there. And you're going to be accepted no matter what. I will? Yeah. So I am a little person. <laughs> this is just a joke. If you lived a hundred years, you'd be singing the same old tune. 
that life can be a monster, but there's still something wrong with you. Hey, bro, did you see the three-stepper stool? I want to put the dishes away and I can't reach the top. <laughs> Dwarf psychosis. <laughs> Yeah. Makes me laugh every time. <laughs> it's, it's such a great. Uh, there's so much comedy in there, and and just the way that you guys were able to really bring everything in, and and Poncho make light of everything, and yeah. it's just it's just so great. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the process uh, further? Like, what did what did being part of the film challenge mean to you? Well, it meant. I mean, it meant. It meant a lot as far as like, you know, we, we, we just did it for the fun of it. And uh, we created this kind of idea, like, like Emily was saying, it was really, it was a really fun concept, the topic of mockumentary and Steven, my, the, the guy that plays my brother, he's a stand up comedian and, and we already had this kind of chemistry, this bond. So it was kind of easy to come up with an idea. And then like he explained before the whole Talladega Nights thing of like, you know, really believing something and everybody in the town or everyone just goes along with it. Just, you know, not to create an argument and not to make it weird, even though it's weird already. So we <laughs> thought that concept would be weird uh, or weird and fun, but also like we could bring light to, to like dwarfism and like and, and kind of almost teach teach in a humorous way like you know we allow people to uh, learn in a humorous way and also normalize disability normalize inclusion just make it so it's not weird all the time like and that's kind of like how we created this that's awesome and you're getting you know you guys were double winners uh, yep. i also sure. like to point out you're a married couple so it's nice uh keeping <laughs> it in the family uh, production wise <laughs> Yeah, but, for uh, sure. Em for Emily, can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, you guys have won a lot of different things from the prizes, including the, the Dell computer. So thank you uh, for that. Uh, but but you got some mentor meetings. And uh, can you talk about, uh, you know, any exciting things that are happening with this project and, and in your career? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, um, we've really had a great time working with Emerlyn, who is the mentor that I uh, got for winning this best film. She's been super helpful in some of the projects we have been working on outside of the film challenge, as well as this one. And we're actually, uh, are currently, we just finished shooting a pilot presentation version of Dwarfopsychosis, and we're working uh, on finishing that and hopefully being able to take that to uh, Emerlyn and a few of the other contacts and see if maybe we can make a, uh, a TV show out of it. Yeah, so. and you think dwarfo psychosis, the, the 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 little five minute thing was funny. Wait till you see this. <laughs> <laughs> that is very exciting. So thank you guys so much. And and Emerlyn is with Comcast BC Universal. So we are going to move on to our next uh, film. And this year was 2020. We changed things up. And normally we are a narrative film competition, but because of the safety of our participants, we, we made documentary the genre. And we have a truly talented participant who was the winner of best film, the creator, the star, and the director of The Fish Don't Care When It Rains. Please welcome Jennifer Masumba. Hi, Nick. Hi, everybody. Hey. Oh, I need to describe myself. I am a brown-skinned female with Glasses, flowery glasses, short curly hair, and I'm wearing a white t-shirt. Okay. Can you set up the film and talk any inspiration behind it? Yes, this film was inspired by a song I had written by the same title. And that song was inspired by a fishing trip where it started raining. And my friend said, Jen, we need to go. It's raining. And I said, well, the fish don't care. They're already wet. And... That kind of made me think a little bit, which led me to write the song and then led me to write the documentary film. Well, great. So without further ado, let's take a look at that film. It's truly amazing. The fish don't care when it rains. Standing in the rain, your hold on me has changed. Though you were tough, I'm strong enough, so let it pour on me. Though the water weighs me down, keep it coming, I won't drown. I'm protected 
from the lightning and the thunder won't hurt me now. Hi, I'm Gemma Simba. If you search the internet, you'll find I'm the only one in the whole world with that name. That's a lot of pressure, because if I mess up, it's all on me. I'm an artist. I love to create. I'm also disabled. I have autism. This is the story of how those things combine to make one unrepeated me. As I've gotten older, I found that I love to garden. It's remarkable to watch a small seed grow into a beautiful plant yielding watermelon or pineapple. Huh, <laughs> pineapples. That's a sensitive topic around here. Two weeks ago, I had an almost fully ripe fruit atop my pineapple plant. Let it ripen on the plant, all the garden articles said. So I let it sit, even though I knew he was out there watching. That fat raccoon that terrorized my trash can every night. He made his move and stole my pineapple, devouring the whole thing. Blimey! Blimey! The nerve, I thought. But then I realized something. He left me the stump which contained the seeds I needed to grow myself another pineapple. I was down, but I was not out. I once was a seed. I laid buried for years, covered in layers of problems. There was obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety, social difficulties, and loneliness. I wanted so badly to break through and soak in the sun, but it wasn't yet my time. So I waited. And just like a seed, when the right elements came into play, I had my breakthrough. I have lived in facilities since I was 15 to help manage my self-injurious behavior and impulsivity. Some of these places were all right. Most weren't. I got worse instead of better until life had just about devoured me. Then I moved to a new facility in Florida. I was replanted. In this new place, I was allowed to grow. I fed my talents. I surrounded myself in music and taught myself new skills, like how to create a vlog, which is kind of like a video diary that the whole world watches. If there is one thing I know is true, is that we all learn in unique ways. And for me, art provided a better view of myself. Watching myself on camera made me painfully aware that I wanted to fix my face. I only had one expression. No wonder why people always thought I was mad. So I worked on different faces. Now I'm a comedian. Then I wanted to make friends because I've been lonely most of my life. So I joined the worship team at my church. We created together, thought together, sang together. Soon we were hanging out. And before I knew it, I was actually socializing. Over time, my forms of expression have continued to diversify. But throughout it all, my deepest passion is music. Music taught me to channel my feelings into a form that connects with people. Before, when I started to get frustrated or upset, I usually ended up hurting myself. But with music, I could take those abstract feelings and write them into a relatable tune that everyone could get behind. So what does my autism mean to me? Well, I've always been autistic, so I don't know anything else. Just like fish, they're already in the water. So they don't care if it rains, they're already wet. I don't mind being autistic. It's been the vehicle that defines my unique voice. Without my disability, I wouldn't be who I am today. I'm Jen, artist and pineapple grower. So let it rain on me. I'm just out here swimming. Torn and broken heart. Well, the fish don't care when it rains. They're already wet. It's just another day for them in paradise If paradise is what they've always known And I can't change where I've been I'm already hurt It's just another day for me in paradise If paradise was knowing not to good yeah. jennifer every okay, time yeah. i watch that movie i start singing your song it's uh it's so good uh thank you can you hear me i can hear you okay yes uh can you talk a little bit about your experience being part of the film challenge what, what does it mean to you to be a part of this um it's been incredible it really helped my confidence it helped me to make friends um, that I never would have met in the that 
also like to make films. It's led to opportunities. I'm looking into making a feature version of Fish Don't Care When It Rains, and I'm also planning other short films. I started writing, I wrote a book. I started writing um, fiction. It just gave me the bug of cre wanting to create. That is so amazing. And your film has truly made the rounds in film festivals. Uh, it's screened all over the world. Can you talk about that? Any any exciting things happen with, with The Fish Don't Care When It Rains and the film festival? Yes, Sorry. I've won several festivals. Um, I just won another one, Screaming Ostrich, which I just think is a cool name. So I was happy to be in that one. And um, I, I've just been, I've just been, um, I won the Sunscreen Film Festival, which led me to, which led me to um, meet a producer who helped me make another film, and that wouldn't have happened without Fish Don't Care. So it's all a big circle. That is amazing. Well, thank you so much. We're going to get a chance to talk to everybody. So if you have questions for any of our winners, make sure to hit them up in the chat. We're going to get to those in the end. But let's keep moving to the winner of Best Film from 2019. <clears throat> that genre was sci-fi. And we have with us the creative team behind it. And it is Amy Hopper and Emily Hopper. Welcome. Hi. Hi. I'm uh, Amy Hopper. Um, I have tears in my eyes, not just from laughter from the first film, sure, but right. um, the inspiration from the second film. Thank you so much um, for those sharing those. Um, I'm a middle-aged white woman with blondish hair. <laughs> I'm hiding the grays and uh, black, wearing black glasses and a black shirt. I'm Emily. I am 18 years old. I'm white. I have a blondish brownish hair and a ponytail but I it was originally a bob but I put it in a ponytail because I don't want any hair in my face and um I am wearing uh I am green. I am a, wearing a green navy shirt dress to support um all of our troops <laughs> and also because it looks cool and also, I am a bilateral amputee with appropriative fingers, and I am a TBI, which is traumatic brain injury. Well, thank you so much uh, for letting us know about yourselves and your disability. You know, something that I think is so important about the Film Challenge is it's really about pride in our disabilities, and it's about showing who we are to the world through our art. Now, can you quickly set up your film? Uh, give us a little bit of inspiration behind it or describe what, what people are about to see. Well, we, we lost the first year we um, entered. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. the second, so the second year we entered was 2019. Um, Emily, Emily's, an art, Emily's an actress and that's what she loves to do. So and we did it and we luckily have a lot of friends that are filmmakers. And so we asked for help this time because my first time I didn't know what I was doing. And um, we had a really great team and it was amazing. And we went in there going, we're gonna make a really great film. And we were so lucky. One of my friends was able to reach out to Panavision and we got a huge camera package um, for free because they told Panavision the story of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. They told Emily's story. And um, it was great. And once that word got around, we had a lot of support and a lot of crew. So it was great. Wow. And to keep in mind, when you watch this film, this was pre-pandemic. So I think we are <laughs> almost uh, could see the future. So <laughs> absolutely, sci-fi for sure. Who knew parenting could tell the future I know. about 2020? <laughs> and we're about to see the future uh, through this great film. So without further ado, Parents Inc. Connor, what are you doing tonight? There's a bunch of us hanging out at the beach tonight. Are you coming? I just have to check in with my parents, you know. Your parents? I gotta be like a responsible adult here. Like, I gotta 
I have to tell them. I have to have an honest relationship with them. Whatever. Let's just hope they say yes. you so long. Seriously, Dad? If I were you, I'd come more prepared in the morning. Like a decent human being. That's you. Here, pumpkin. Have a nice oatmeal. Oh, Mom! It looks like a pretty Language? That's not going to happen. That boy is no good. I like him. He's a good kid. What do you see in him anyway? Hey. What? What did you do to my plant? I watered it every day, like you're supposed to. Killed it! <sighs> what happened? Why is this so hard? I've tried my best. Is it just me or is it them? I am so tired of all of this. I just want things to be normal. Hey. Sorry about the plant. You okay? You know he's not programmed to have a deeper recognition of human binary emotions. And he just can't process the attachment you have for Connor. Or anything else for that matter. I'm so glad you understand me, Mom. Of course. And... You always have this. Mm hmm? Where do you think you're going dressed like that? Nowhere. Now you listen here, young lady. You are coming from a respectable family, and this is a complete embarrassment. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. Pick him up later. Hey, Connor. Hey, Olivia. You look great. Thank you. Olivia, I want you back home before eight. Excuse me? I said be back before. Hi, it's me again. Olivia Jones? Again? Yeah. How are you? I'm okay. I need some new parents. Olivia, this will be delivery number 100. Mm-hmm. May I ask what was wrong with the other ones? I did like the mom, but her cooking was horrible. And, uh, oh, yeah. They killed my plant. My only plant. Yeah, I need my new parents right away. All right, see you again, Olivia. See ya. No, no. Do you like these?
<laughs> wow. So you, you really did see the future there. <laughs> we totally did. And such, it's such oops. a great film and performance, Emily. Um, you know, speaking of that performance. That, that performance really gained a lot of attention in the industry with a lot of uh, casting executives and people really getting a chance to see you in, in such a three-dimensional role. And uh, can you talk a little bit about... Uh, We're back. We're back, I think. We don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, you're, you're good, you're good. So as I was saying, you know, that that role uh, truly made the rounds in casting directors and in industry. You yeah. know, uh, you were able to work with such an amazing team with that film. Yeah. Um, can you talk about any success stories that happened uh, well, from that, I, that film? Well, I was pretty inspired by sci-fi because, you know, a lot of sci yeah, a cool. lot of movies have, have made my, life uh easy because i felt like i was the only one with who had a disability and movies have truly made me feel special and then i found out about this um uh easter seals disability film challenge and it made my life turn upside down and after i did this film I got a mom, mom got a, an email from Netflix saying we're looking for uh, someone who could be in our Netflix movie. Would your daughter be able to do it? And I went to the audition and a few minutes or a few days later, I got a mom got an email saying, congratulations, Amy, we found our Meg. It is your daughter. And so and the Amy she's referring to is Amy Poehler. Yeah. Amy Poehler directed this next Netflix film, Moxie. Which is now on <laughs> Netflix now. Stream it anytime. And she made the she made the poster. There she is. Ooh. And um, yeah, no, and she after that was able to get an agent, yeah. uh, Gail Williamson at KMR. Mm -hmm. She the the film made the rounds. And so as you said, Nick, it made the rounds, and that really was how she got so much attention. And um, it was really great. Yeah, and it was fun promoting it too. Yeah, and I just got and say, Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Yeah, and I just gotta say, Nick, you have been, you are honestly the whole reason I want to accept myself as a disabled oh. person. Like, I mean, I honestly felt like I was, I was a black sheep during when I was in school because everywhere I went, people were just like, hey, robot girl, or hey, are you the Terminator? Which actually also inspired um, Parents Inc. <laughs> but I think what is nice is that the community that we make these films with is so accepting and to see so much talent come from people with disabilities, it's just outstanding and really inspirational. So thank you, Nick. Thanks to Easter Seals. And I can't, Thanks to Microsoft. And I can't wait to work with you again, Nick. <laughs> Well, I, I can't wait to work with you. And, you know, your words mean so much, uh, Emily and, and yours, Amy. I, I will say in terms of talent, you know, when we shared your film with those casting directors at, at Netflix, I mean, they were truly blown away. And, you know, they they just were like, she's amazing, you know, and, and what's so exciting is you being uh, somebody who is still in school, um, you know, they were able to see your film, see your work from the film challenge, you know, something you did in a very short period of time. And to have this lead to a major film, which is distributed around the world with such a legend, uh, including Amy Poehler, uh, it's truly amazing because I know Amy Poehler got a chance to work with a legend in you. So mm -hmm. I can't you. wait to see you continue to succeed. Now we are up to our last film, and this year was our 2018 winner of Best Film, the genre buddy comedy. We have the star of that film here with us today. Please welcome Danny J. Gomez. Hey, Nick, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Okay, so I'll, yes, yes. Uh, I am a Latino male. I'm wearing a simple blue Henley. And from what the rest of my panel told me earlier, perfectly coiffed hair. <laughs> in, uh, in 2016, I was injured in a mountain biking accident that left me paralyzed from the waist down, so I use a wheelchair. And that leads into the setup of the, the film. 
because for a, after that time, I felt very alone and I, I didn't have a sense of community. I was newly disabled. I didn't know anyone in the community. And then I got a random text, which I still have. And I'm just going to read you this and then we can go into the film because I had no idea what I was getting into. So the text read, hey, Danny, would you be interested in being part of a film for the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge? My good friend Carl Hansen is directing and shoots this Saturday in the Valley. I didn't know who it was from. And I just happened to say yes. And the outcome is what you're going to see now. Well, it's such a beautiful place. Thanks. So why is there a vacancy? My roommate is moving to New York. Well, I don't know why she would with you as a roommate. Um, thanks. I'll let you know. Oh, I guess this is a goodbye then. Uh, are you my 3 p.m.? Yes, I am. Whitney? Uh, you're early. <laughs> You. You. Do you guys know each other, or? Do we know each other? Ha! Let me guess, you going for this place too, Zach? I see your detective skills have not gone malnourished, Chad. So, anywho, I- Is it inside of your price range? I can afford it. Well, so can I. How exactly do you know each other? October, 2015. I had just moved into town. I had a job, a car, and a dog. All that was missing was a roommate. But this vile man ruined my apartment interview and just killed my soul. Thus began my solo living arrangement. In retaliation, he then got me kicked out of my own apartment. Wait, what? That was not on your background check. And we've been sworn enemies ever since. So you got kicked out? What, did you kill too many people or something? Ma'am. It shall be my honor to prove my worthiness as a roommate against this vile man. No, it shall be mine. I loathe you. I loathe you. So much fun in New York. Can you believe this? Let's just get this over with. This is the dining room. This is the living room. And here is the front yard. OK, bye now. And what about the kitchen? Damn, I knew I forgot something. I have a question. Oh, good, he has a question. Do you like the place? I do. Mm. The amenities are nice and she's an absolute hottie. I'm literally standing right here. How about you? I do. I feel like it suits my style. Well, I guess it comes down to who wins it all. Me or you. There are quite a few other applicants, so... I think I know how to settle this. Rochambeau. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot! shoot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, gentlemen, please. What else you got? Don't encourage them. No. I only make the best coffee. And it can be yours every morning if you choose me. Well, I can make this for you every day, morning, noon, and night. Can you not touch that, please? Those just eggs. I can wash your dishes. I can wash your floors. I can wash your clothes. I can wash your car. I can do that, too. I'll do all the chores for you. I'll be like your personal maid. And I can be your topless maid. Well, I can do them all. Fully new. That was my favorite chair. Well, I can take you home and be the husband you never had for your mother and father. My parents are dead. So, who do you think can get the mail faster? Well, I can get the mail in under five seconds. I can do it faster than that. Got it for you. Hey, man. Uh... I think she's gonna come out of here? I don't know. Hello? Fellas, thanks for your interest, but I have just decided there is nothing quite like living alone. 
So what about having a roommate? Yeah, or somebody to keep you company. Or somebody to snuggle with during movies. Wait, you like to snuggle too? Well, yeah. I mean, the other night I was watching a romantic comedy. I just want somebody to snuggle with. Was it that time travel love story? How'd you know? I saw it too, Channel 9, right? It was amazing. Yeah, totally. See, there are benefits to having a roommate. Yeah, like being able to talk about your day. Or how much work sucks. Yeah, and how much my boss sucks. Mine too. Really? See? See? <laughs> Look, man, you're really sweet. I think you should take it. No, 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 you, you take it. You thinking what I'm thinking? She just can't decide between the two of us. Yeah, we are told to catch. Yeah, we are. Hey, uh, you just wanna... Get a place together? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh. No, 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 you put it there. Okay, I'll go up. Oh, okay, you go up. Yeah. And then I'll just... Perfect. And I'll rub you in. Yeah. That's good. I mean, I mean, it's like we're brothers. Yeah. It's like we came out of the womb together. I, that's what I'm saying. Totally. I, I remember seeing you in there. I, I saw you in there oh too. Oh my God, you were wearing the same yeah, shirt. Yeah, Oh, it's you! It's that! Uh, yeah, Chad! I, exactly. Like two it's buddies! A, it's so warm and cozy in there, man. Man. I've been trying to get back since I got out. How's your foot? Oh, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts like hell. Yeah, because you're gonna have to take me out of here, bro. Oh, no, it's not happening. Well, no. we're calling like a service or something. Guess we're stuck. Yeah. Great job, Danny! Thank you, thank you. Truly, truly, such a great performance. Um, you know, we, we continue to get calls from that performance uh, about who is this actor? Uh, you know, <laughs> I believe you got an agent, um, you know, from that award ceremony uh, who you're you're still with. And, you know, you really gave such a touching speech about how much uh, this film challenge meant to you during that award ceremony. Can you talk about what the film challenge means to you? The film challenge means everything. It changed my entire outlook on life. It introduced me to this disabled community of artists and just uh, the whole community and the whole that that brought me in and just made me feel welcome. And I didn't feel alone anymore. So like I, I teared up in the, when I was giving that speech and, I, and just watching that brought all these feelings back. So thank you, Nick, for everything you did because you really changed my life, man. Well, I think you changed it for yourself because your talent, you know, shines through. You're you're such a great actor. And, you know, something else I think is very interesting is you said that you actually have worked more since you've uh, joined the disability community than you did before you had a disability. And, you know, through this film, it's, it's led to other opportunities. Can you can you talk about some of those recent success stories in, in your career? Yeah, it's crazy because when I, before I was disabled, you know, I got disabled, I had no confidence in myself and I was just completely lost. And then when I became disabled, it focused, it made me focus on my life. So I figured out my path. And then when, uh, after the, the challenge, I got the agent. And then shortly after that, I booked a role on NBC's New Amsterdam, my first guest star role. Uh, I played a quadriplegic pilot, which opened so many doors and that is all because of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Well, thank you so much. And your talent is shining, and, and so is everybody's talent. Let, let's bring everybody back in, all the winners. Come on, let's join our virtual stage. High five, virtual. Let's go. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that. I love doing that. You know, we, are, uh, we, we have time still for, for a couple more questions and we're gonna keep it going, but believe me, the work we're doing is gonna continue to, to spread and there's a lot of opportunities for you to get involved and stay involved, following us on our social uh, sites and, and seeing what's next. Uh, real quick, I'd like to, a speed round of questions and then we're gonna uh, keep it going. But, uh, you know, Pancho and Emily, your pilot, you actually brought in other uh, people from the film challenge. Can you talk about that? Sure. So after seeing performances by some of the other people that were nominated and went won, we decided that it would be great to incorporate and uh, in them into our pilot and uh, wanted to work with them. So we have Best Actress winner Natalie Trevon and uh, Breaking Cody star Cody La Scala that are going to be in our pilot. And it was amazing to work with them. And there's a lot of other people that we've met, uh, including the folks here that we would love to work with in the future. Yeah. 
And and the idea of our pilot, like, uh, is basically to kind of uh, bring awareness to uh, disabilities. Like, in each episode, there would be like a cameo from someone with inclusion, you know, whether it's mental, a mental disability or a physical disability, but it's something real. It's not just people playing like they have it. It's, it's the real deal. And we just want to normalize that. Okay. I'll stop. Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I, you know, I'm, I'm married too. And I know sometimes uh, we're in that spot. Oh, wait a minute. Am I talking too much? Not enough. Uh, but you guys really, you know, have so much talent and passion you bring together. Um, you know, Jennifer, I have a question for you. Uh, you know, your film is so personal and, you know, you, you really brought your, your whole soul into this. Why was it important for you to, to, you know, bring autism awareness into your film and to really open up? It was really important because my whole life I've been underestimated because of my autism and I have been tr treated like I was less than everybody else around me and I wanted to show that not only is that not true about people with autism and other disabilities but that we can like we have goals and passions and things we love too and I just wanted to share that with the world that we have feelings emotions and things that we dream for too so I wanted to make people more aware of that that's awesome I got one more question and then I, I'm going to bring in uh, our my uh, cohort uh, Nancy Weintraub from Easter Seals Southern California to see if we have uh, time to answer a, a question or two from from the audience uh, before we get to that, uh, real quick, I would like to, you know, bring up that, you know, with the film challenge, this is an opportunity where people can uh, be first time actors, writers, directors and producers. Uh, so we have a lot of people breaking in. But then again, we also have a established talent to take part. You know, Emily Hopper and Amy Hopper, your film was, you know, directed by Harold Zwart, who's directed major motion pictures, mm -hmm. uh, including The Karate Kid. Uh, and you, you've also had Oscar winners and Marsha Gay Harden in, in your films. Can you talk about what that meant to you to be able to bring in your community uh, and so many people that were able to, to get behind your films? Oh, well, as you probably have known, Emily has a pretty big personality and um, our friends have always kind of gravitated towards Emily and knows that she um, loves to act and entertain and be funny. And um, Harold jumped at the opportunity when I asked him because he wanted to help us out. And uh, Marsha also luckily was a free because she was in the middle of doing a play in um, in London and on Code Black. So we lucked out when we got both of them. Um, but really, it's because they believe in inclusion and they believe in being part of something like this. And um, I'm just grateful. I mean, I was a first time producer. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't know what craft services was or anything. And, <laughs> and uh, I, think um, you, I think that your your film speaks for itself and that, you know, what you and, and Emily were able to do uh, truly, uh, I, I would assume you you have been making films for years and years because well, it's of, asking uh, for help and, <laughs> you know, all I did. <laughs> That's amazing. So let me bring on uh, Nancy Weintraub from Easter Seal Southern California, our uh, virtual Vanna White here. Uh, you know, as always, our, our discussion, we have so much to say, and I know uh, we're, we're getting closer towards that time. But do we have time? Uh, Nancy, do we have any uh, questions from the audience? I know we're going to get to all those questions offline, too, if we don't get to them. So, you know, make sure to, to still ask those and to follow us online and stay engaged. But Nancy, do we have anything from, from our... Uh... We do. And first and foremost, there's been a lot of really incredible comments, people saying how funny these, these films were, how well done they were. Everyone's just so thrilled to be able to see all of your films. So I just wanted to share those shout outs. But I think one question that, that I think is most important to, you know, our conversations today about Microsoft and Dell being such great partners, 
is what role does technology play for you in the creative process? Um, okay. Sure. So um, we we found that with the way technology works now, uh, you have everything you need to make a movie. You've got phones that film just as good as any of the other cameras. You've got like Steven Soderbergh is using phones to shoot his movies. We have like the Dell computers and the software, Adobe software that comes that you can do everything on your own. If you want to make something happen, you can. And being and being an actor and now with the world being of, of self tapes, auditions and stuff, we have all the equipment you need, all the lights, the mics, the sound, the lavaliers, everything that you need to make something happen and make it look good. Absolutely, uh, you know, and I think all of you truly are uh, examples of that. You know, Jennifer, you know, uh, do you have any comment on that as well? Because you know, you, uh, you you have talked about you doing everything on your on your own. Yes, well, de definitely, because of technology, I've been able to do things on my own, to teach myself things, to use computers, to um teach myself things and to get out there so it's if it had, wasn't for the technology we have now uh, there's no way i'd be where i am well last last comment i'd like to get on this you know danny uh you're able to use technology uh for the films for the film challenge and also in your career as an actor uh can you can you talk about how technology is able to help you and through the film challenge and, and beyond well, let's just talk about how technology has brought us here. Thanks to Microsoft Teams, we're all able to be in the same space, right? So thank you for that. I mean, that that is what kind of kept me going through quarantine was the ability to use apps like this to do my self tapes and to have these meetings and be productive or else I would have gone crazy sitting in my house by myself. So uh, if it wasn't for technology like this, I don't know where we'd be right now. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank all of you enough. The the winners, everyone at Microsoft, the the teams teams. Uh, you know, Nancy, I know. You know, we're we're truly just so grateful for for everybody. Microsoft, Dell, um, all all of you that that everything you're able to do. So make sure to hit those comments, uh, Nancy. For do you have any other uh, closing closing remarks before? Yeah, I do. And and there was a lot of questions about the process, like how is it judged? What is the creative process? What is the time frame? And so you will see at the end, there's a link, but you can always go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. All of that is laid out there. Um, but, you know, we're here today at, you know, really appreciative of Microsoft and Dell giving this, us the opportunity to, um, share with you what we do and encourage you to donate. I, I know that Microsoft is matching all of you, which is amazing, but there's lots of different ways that you can partner with us as we change the way the world defines and views disability. You know, I know that there's people from all over the country on this call today. There's an Easter Seals in each one of your communities. You know, try and take a look at the local impact in your communities, volunteer or donate locally. But most importantly, we want as many people as possible to see our films. So like our films, share our films, you know, join our social media presence, join our YouTube channel, maybe even create a film next year. It's always done in April of every year with our awards ceremony in May. So we invite you all to join us. Remember everybody, watch, like, and share the films. You're gonna see uh, ways to engage and be a part of our year-round activations, workshops, seminars. But it's all of you and your talent and your support that allows us to change the way the world views disability. So thank you so much. Uh, do we have uh, some, some, some guests coming back um, to, to... Okay, so we, we are... Our esteemed host uh, to close this out. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. There's not much I I should do to close this. I think Nick, you you summed it up really well. Um, how inspirational those stories. Let's go like those videos. See how we can go and contribute, whether that's time, money, or both. 
Um, what, what an amazing session today and watch party. Uh, the, these um, videos are just amazing and short stories. And so can't wait to keep watching them and see more and more and more. Uh, Laura, any other closing comments from you? Yes, thank you everyone. This has been amazing, so inspirational. For Microsoft employees, I would encourage you if you haven't gotten your accessibility badge yet, please do that. I mean, you've seen so much talent here today. Um, and if you wanna stay, we will have an after reel showing some additional uh, takeouts from the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. So please stick around if you can. Thank you so much, everyone. And the closing comment is thank you, Keith from Dell. Um, you heard, you know, some of the computers and what they're supplying and supporting and a founding sponsor. Um, really, really significant and I love the partnership there. So thank you very much. I launched the Disability Film Challenge from over the course of a weekend. Participants write, shoot, edit, and submit three to five minute films that have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. Partnering with Easter Seal Southern California really took it to the next level because to date we've had hundreds of films, countless success stories, and ultimately we're changing the way people see disability in Hollywood. I am very grateful for the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge for giving people like me a chance to star in their own films and be recognized in them. I wrote, produced, and created my own film and it led to this amazing opportunity. I want to play, but I can't play for someone else to that. It doesn't matter whether you win or not, but if you do win, it's a game changer for your career. I've made huge connections at HBO, I've gotten to have interviews with Academy Award-winning editors. Leah J. Zelaya makes her debut in the upcoming film starring Jennifer Lopez, Maluma, and Owen Wilson. It was actually unexpected. It was through the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. I'm asked to present an award at the Disability Film Challenge. I was so excited because I truly believe there's so much talent out there in the disabled community that is just not acknowledge the way that it should, uh, not naming names, but actually I'm gonna name names because I saw a short film starring Nicole Evans and I knew that I wanted her to be in season two of Special and she is, she's incredible. And the industry is waking up to the value of authentically portraying characters with disabilities and including more people with disabilities in roles and specifically in roles that don't have to do with their disabilities.